Smog pumps. Some love them, most hate them. I am of the latter of those two groups. I absolutely hate the damn things and I yard them out of every single Fox body that I've ever owned. Now I am fortunate in that I live in an area that does not require me to have any of that BS under my hood in order to pass emissions. If you do, I hate to tell you, you're probably going to have to leave it in. For me, out they come. Now, for a few different reasons. One, I think they're ugly. Two, they make noise. And three, the whole premise behind the smog pump system is completely ridiculous. This 5-0-H-O produces a certain amount of emissions. Ford decides they're going to put an air pump on it and pump fresh air into the back of the heads and or downstream into the exhaust pipe in order to water down the emissions that come out the tailpipe. I fear you're underestimating the sneakiness, sir. Moving on from that, I did a video on removing the smog pump from this 1991 convertible about a year ago. And still to this day, I kid you not, I get asked the exact same two questions consistently and I get it. It's a pain to roll through comments and, and whatever. So today what I want to do is go a little bit more in depth on the smog pump system removal and show you exactly how and why you do what you do and answer these questions that just keep coming up. Hopefully this clears the air for everyone. Starting under the hood, and my apologies, it's filthy under here. I've had the car in some dusty conditions, don't judge me. This here is a idler pulley that I installed in place of the smog pump. Shout out Infamous Project, he always lights me up about running these things, but I like running them because I like running the stock length accessory drive belt. You can run an 86 and a half inch belt or whatever it is and avoid this idler pulley, but for what it's worth, I like running them. So. The only issue you're going to find yourself in up here is the bolts that hold the smog pump to the block can be quite sticky. So penetrating fluid and or be prepared to lean on the wrench and the ratchet pretty good to get those bolts broken loose. You're going to have your air box and all this plumbing removed so you can access the smog pump and or all of its plumbing behind it. Now underneath, essentially underneath your mass air meter here is a bypass valve. And then behind all this, right in around this area, is a diverter valve. Both of these valves are in the smog pump plumbing. And they are, both of those valves are ran by vacuum. And the vacuum lines come off of this vacuum tree. And now this is where one of the big questions comes from is, how do I cap off the vacuum lines that go to the diverter valve and the bypass valve. So what I do is I just cut the stock line about a quarter inch in length coming out of this tree and I cap it off with these rubber plugs. You can buy these rubber plugs at your local parts store. Go in and ask them for some carburetor vacuum plugs. They'll give you a whole kit of various sizes. Find the right size to plug off your lines and cap them off. Now the only other thing you're gonna have to deal with back here is there's a crossover pipe that goes to both sides of the cylinder heads. It comes out of this diverter valve. It's all part of the smog system. Some people leave the crossover pipe in place, get a great big hose and a bolt and a hose clamp and they just plug it off. Or in the case like I did, you can remove that crossover pipe and buy the block off plates. LMR sells them, American Muscle, all those guys do. And you can run a block off plate in the back of each one of your cylinder heads. I just want you to really be aware that you have to do something with that. You cannot leave it open to air, okay? Your car will run like garbage. And then uh, from this diverter valve, the other line goes down to your H pipe. You're gonna have to cut that line off somewhere down close to where it crosses over at your H and your exhaust pipe crimp the line and weld it over so it's nice and tight and sealed off. Those are your two areas that, well, I get questions on that quite a bit. This guy I get questions on about the only other thing I get randomly asked questions on is if and when I remove my smog system, am I gonna throw codes, gonna get check engine lights, all that good stuff? The answer to that question is no. 
The smog system is like a standalone system. It has nothing to do with your computer or any wiring. There's no wires you have to remove, nothing, okay? All of this stuff is standalone. The only lines that attach to this smog system are those two vacuum lines like I pointed out. You cap them off, you're good. You remove all this garbage, clean up your engine bay, and you're ready to rock and roll. Again, if you haven't seen that first video of me removing the smog system, I'll give you a link for it right here. Go and check that out. It gives you the step-by-step -step process of how to pull all of this stuff out. And then this video, I hope should fill in some of the gaps, some of the things I might've left out in that last video. So I hope this helps you out guys. If it does, please share it around. That's why I do the videos, share them with the community. And I love this community. And I love helping it out. So thanks for tagging along guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, bye for now.